We're looking at something special and it's a model to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Liebherr LTM 1800 mobile crane. This model is produced by YCC and it comes in some very high quality packaging. The crane is in the colours of Schmidbauer and it comes with this very nice collector card with only 200 having been made. When we take off the top layer of foam rubber we see there's a manual and it begins with a reprint of technical information from the real crane. That always adds a touch of quality to a scale model and when we get to the back of the manual we find there's a page that deals with the model itself. But the one page is not enough because there are also a couple of other printed sheets which give some more information about how to assemble and rig the model. The instructions are reasonable but they don't cover every aspect of the assembly. One of the things that's really nice about the presentation is the care with which the parts have been packaged. And here you can see that ribbons are used to help you lift out the main boom which is very nicely wrapped in soft paper. For the assembly we'll start by getting the whole model ready in a road going configuration. And we'll start by screwing in a piston which goes into each of four outrigger beams. They go in easily enough and then we can reset the outrigger beam into its travelling position. Next we'll go up to the operator's cab and there are a couple of things to fit. The instructions suggest gluing but we don't like gluing on cranes etc. So we'll just mount the two lights by pushing them in. And on the review model the fit is tight enough for them to stay in on their own. Next we don't want a member of the Cranes Etc team falling off and breaking his plastic head. So there's a handrail to fit outside the cab and that just pushes into place. One nice touch is that you have a choice of windscreens for the cab window. One represents an open position and the other represents a closed position. But to begin with the crane is going on the road so we'll fit the closed window. Once that's done we can then return the cab to its travelling position. At the back of the crane there is a spare wheel but it's a bit heavy. So there's a small winch arm that you can add and that just pushes into place. And we're all set if a tyre gets a puncture in the display case. There are four wheel chocks provided and we can put two on either side of the crane. And to shed a bit more light going forwards there are a pair of headlamps to fit at the front. Now we get onto something more significant which is to add all of the rope to the winch drums. The instructions tell you how much you need for each drum so you have to cut those off of the length that's supplied on a reel. You may wonder why the rope is grey and not black and it's because the model is accurately representing the real crane when it was new. Once you've cut a length of rope you can pass it through a hole in the winch drum and then the best thing to do is to tie a knot in the free end. After that you can use the key into the side of the body and slowly winch on the rope. To tidy it up we'll cut the loose tail off and then rather than having a 3 hour video of me operating the winch drum we can speed things up by using an electric screwdriver into the winch key. Loading the first three drums is straightforward, but there's a lot more work to do for the boom gantry. Here we've temporarily supported the gantry and it has to be reeved up with two separate ropes. And each rope goes to one half of winch drum number four. So the way we've tackled it is to reeve both halves first without attaching it to the winch drums. And after we've tied off to the rocking equaliser, we end up with two lengths of rope and we've threaded those through the winch drum. We need to maintain the same tension in both halves of the reeving and although the equaliser will help with that we need to be careful and just make our knots at exactly the same point in each rope. We then pull the knots through to the drums and start winding in. After that it's a matter of keeping an eye on the winch drums and making sure that the rope is wound on evenly. With that done the crane is ready for the road. But that's only part of it because here's the main boom and there are a couple of supports for it to rest on. There's not much preparation to do other than to screw in the locking pins that go into the end of the boom sections. And on the real crane these were hydraulically actuated. Of course the big heavy boom needs its own transport so here's a big Schmidbauer transporter for it. This is not the configuration of the real truck that was used but at least it's in the right colours of Schmidbauer. After carefully positioning the supports the giant hand crane can place the boom into position. 
And because we've got a 10 axle trailer with a 60 ton main boom, we've also got capacity to add on some counterweight. So let's add on four plates and each one represents 10 tons. Of course there's a lot more counterweight than that to carry so we need a ballast carrier. And here's one in Schmidbauer colours that we can get loaded up. The model comes with a scale 200 tons of ballast. So we do need some more transport to help carry the load. Next up we've got a simple trailer that can carry some counterweight. And we'll also put on some handrails and access platforms. We've still got more to carry so here's another trailer. And on this one we'll put the outriggers and some more counterweight. We're nearly done now with a few more parts to add which includes a smaller hook. And also a very large multi-block hook. The last thing we'll add on is a couple of access ladders which can clip onto the side of the crane. But we'll just stick them on one of our trailers. Looking underneath, the chassis detail has the transmission modelled, with only the silver screw and washer looking out of place. But the tyres and wheels are nice, and the components are all modelled in metal. This version of the model has some new castings to represent the older style of cab, and it looks very convincing. Behind the cab, the engine area has some very nice details with grills showing fans underneath. Among the nicer details are the tyres which have Michelin imprinted on the sidewalls. And at the back there's a nice array of realistic graphics. The outrigger beams are metal with realistic detailing. And the spreader beams and pads are also metal. The crane cab is excellent with detailed graphics both outside and in. And there are soft hydraulic hoses running from the boom to the crane. And at the back the sheaves are metal and the counterweight blocks have usable lifting lugs. The boom is a heavy piece of construction which replicates the real one very well. The profile of the boom sections looks great with Schmidbauer on every section. And at the boom top the many sheaves are metal. And both hook blocks supplied with the model are all metal pieces. We begin by looking underneath and each of the wheels turns independently. And the model also has linked steering. The four axles at the front are linked together in a proportional way. Although the mechanism is not quite strong enough so you do have to adjust the wheels a little bit by hand. At the back the easier two axle steering is better. So let's try the big LTM 1800 on the road. And not all of the axles were quite grounded on the review model. However if we try it out on a more flexible road surface. Then all the wheels do bite and they turn. Let's now try our usual test on the steering. And we will set the front and rear axles and see how we get on. With a bit of care and adjustment you can steer the model in a gentle curve. And of course there's no problem posing it turning in a static display. We have been driving along so let's take a look at the carrier cab. And using a supplied pointer you can open the cab doors. A very nice example of the micro-engineering on this model is the tiny magnets that are used to secure the doors in a closed position. And another example is the tiny opening flap on the controls for the outrigger beams. We're opening that up because we're on site and here the outrigger pads are down. And if we add the spreader beam we see another really nice touch on this model, which is the magnetic connections. And that means that the parts are able to stay together easily. With the spreaders down we can open up the outrigger beam. And then we can wind down the piston to the right length to engage with the spreader beam. As always a nice test of the outrigger system is whether the crane can be held wheels free and it can. And now we can go on to begin to open up the crane and we first will set the cab into its working position. And another very nice touch on the model is that access to the winch drums is via a removable magnetically held panel. There's no panel for the front two winch drums because the real crane in this configuration didn't have one. Having raised the boom gantry to a forward position we can then proceed and rotate the crane. And in order to lift and attach the boom we need the assistant crane to attach the counterweight tray at the back. 
and that locks in place with a couple of steel pins. That all forms a nice solid connection and then we can add some counterweight. And we'll load up 40 tonnes to begin with. But safety is important so let's add on a couple of access platforms. Two go on behind the cab and one goes on on the opposite side, although they are a little bit loose fitting. We also need to provide some safety for the rigging team walking on the boom. And there are a couple of metal handrail sections which can be clipped into place. Now the crane can rotate to lift up the boom using its erection cylinder. And to help that the lifting chains for the boom are already attached. On the model the lifting cylinder is not strong enough to hold the heavy boom. So we fast forward to the boom in place and we connect it with a couple of big steel pins. And then we need to add the hydraulic connection. And that's why the access platform was attached earlier. Again it's a loose fit but we've attached it and we're replacing the handrail. We can now get ready to lift the boom so we need to attach the pendant bars. And they are secured with steel pins. And then we can hoist away. Back in 1987 Liebherr used a winch system to raise the heavy boom. But nowadays big hydraulic rams are used. Having lifted the boom a little we can reeve up the hook. And thankfully it's not the most difficult hook to do the reeving on. So the number of swear words used was at a minimum. With the hook all properly tied off we can begin to winch up the boom. Depending on what we want to lift we might need to add a bit of counterweight. So let's use the handling crane to top it up. And to keep the stack secure and in place there's a locking chain that can be used. It has to be threaded down through the holes in the stack and then you can pin locking clips into place at the bottom and when the chain is pulled tight you can lock one at the top. So the basic rigging of the crane is now complete and we've added some lifting chains although they're not included with the model and we'll move on to take a look at the remaining features of the model. The cab has got a full tilting movement to help the operator working at height and there's also a sliding door on the cab which was a little bit clunky on the review model. To telescope the boom we need to remove the locking pins from both sides of the relevant section and then the boom can be smoothly pulled out. A nice feature of the model is that each section can be locked in a variety of positions and these are at 50%, 92% and 100% extension. Once you find the position you want you line up the hole and insert the locking pins and screw them in. So in a way this replicates the real crane and it works very well. Finally we need to do what all cranes do and that's lift something. And here we're hooked up to a heavy steel fabrication. And a giant electric screwdriver is used to lift the load. Let's now do a dim check on the full height of the model and at maximum extension it's about 49 inches or 125 centimeters. This is a superb limited edition model by YCC with only 200 being made. A major plus point is the authenticity of the detailing and a great effort has been made to make it authentic. It looks great, it performs well, and overall there's no doubt, it's an excellent model. Mm -hmm.